One, two, three, grind outs. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Uncommons podcast, episode number um, 18 or 27 or 64. I have no idea. It could be, <laughs> it could be eight at this point. I have no idea. But uh, Luke Box is here with Caleb Fossum. Um, we're excited about this one. What are we talking about today? Um, you know, I think we're going to get into the confidence um, aspect of life and just kind of being secure with yourself, um, being able to take a step aside from this comparison world that we live in with social media and all this mm -hmm. other stuff going on and just really be confident in yourself and who you are. Yeah, I mean, social media is such an incredible tool, but at the same time, it's such an evil mm -hmm. tool um, for so many people because it makes people think that they've just like failed in life by the time they're like 17, which is yeah. so messed up. And... I am definitely guilty of being on both ends of that, um, of using it as a tool to completely help me in a ton of things in my life. Um, but I've definitely been on the tool of, or the other side of the tool of like, I have been the tool too, by the way. <laughs> uh, but on the other side of that, of just like um, comparing myself to people that are younger than me, more successful, um, people just like dudes that are in way better shape. Um, you know, you see the fancy cars, you see all of those things. and. You know, there's a whole thing of like, yeah, there's money behind some of those ads where it's just like anybody can be pushing anything. Yeah. But even just like uh, to the point of like following people on social media when it's like I could stop seeing their stuff if I just unfollowed them. But yeah. I just keep I, I yeah. don't do that. You love the torture. Yeah. <laughs> just like and then, but you keep comparing seeing yourself or comparing yourself to them. And it's like it's so negative and it can just ruin your day and just mess with your mental and all of those things. And uh there comes a certain confidence um, like that comes around once you realize, like, dude, stop comparing yourself. Yes. Um, or if you compare yourself, like, use it as a source of motivation and, yeah. like, realize that, dude, the pie's big enough for everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, that person being in shape or that person having that card doesn't take away from you, like, getting your own, yeah. you know? Yeah, and that's a huge um, thing. You know, we keep – that's kind of a little metaphor we keep using, the pie's big enough for everybody, and I truly believe that. I mean – just because I, I, I love support. I think that goes into confidence is like friends supporting friends, business supporting business, you know, um, speed trainer supporting speed trainer, whatever the case is in that industry. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so in support to everybody because it's like the pie is big enough. You can't, you're not going to train 10,000 kids at one time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so there's going to be enough for everybody in the aspect of show love, like show support. And, um, you know, Les Feldman's one of the biggest like speed trainers, you know, in the country, in the country <laughs> right now. Um, and just pr producing, you know, results after results after results with huge uh, name players and great off-season training and from little ages to NFL guys. Um, but, you know, he told me th pretty much the same thing. Like, dude, it it's big enough for everybody. It's all love. Like, he loves when people, you know, use his, his stuff or, you know, shout him out. And he's like, dude, I answer every DM. I try to post everybody on my story. I try to answer everybody because it's all love. You're never too big enough to do the little things. And I think that's where the confidence comes from. He, he's secure in himself as a trainer that he doesn't need to compare himself to anybody. And if people try to come and say they're better than him or whatever, he just he just lets them have their, their time to shine. It's like, you're going to have people that hate on you. You're never going to please everybody. So it's like, stop trying to please everybody. Stop trying to be on everybody's good side. Just be secure with yourself. Be confident in who you are as a person. Your true authenticity that we like to talk about, this authenticity that's unwavering. Like, you know exactly who you are at all times. You never have to double guess who you are. And that's just confidence. And that's just walking around with that swagger, like, you know, nobody can stop me. Totally, and uh, to build off of Les is uh, somebody who's uh, been in my life for the last couple of years is Jordan Palmer, and he's always taught um, everybody he gets work with, and I've seen him talk to, you know, like, people who lead, like, I've seen him talk to billionaires, and I've seen him, like, say the same exact thing to eight-year-old quarterbacks, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, authenticity is the root of confidence, because when you really know who you are, you can walk into the room and know the value that you bring, you know where you are the best in the room, you know where you're the worst in the room, and knowing both ends of that is what's gonna build confidence because besides authenticity, it's like, it's a preparation. Yeah. You put in the work to prep for whatever it is, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if you put in the work to prep yourself, that is going to build more confidence than I think anything external possibly could. Because there's a thing where if you know how to build internal confidence, any externalities like don't matter. They literally yeah. don't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the big thing with, with confidence and authenticity too is just like believing in your own product, right? Like knowing the value that you bring when you step into a room. And I think that's huge. Like like believing in the work that you put in. It's, it's pretty much like that whole week of practice, right? For athletes and you practice all week for a Friday night, Saturday night, even Sunday for the NFL guys. Like you got to believe in that you put in that work and you're prepared for, for the game. You know what I mean? It's, it's life's the game. So it's the whole time when you're seeing, you know, I mean, especially for me going through that process of training and I'm seeing guys get drafted, I'm seeing guys on teams, it's so easy to sit here and compare yourself and be like, oh, 
you know, be all bitter about it, like, oh, I'm so much better than this guy, whatever. Like, instead of that, just show love, man, because I think it's so true, and I talked with Les about this too, like, when you put people first, everything else just seems to follow. Mm -hmm. Like, when you just show support and you're a good person, it's weird how things start to fall in line for you. Maybe your business starts to take off. Maybe you end up getting that call. Maybe, you know, just good things start to happen to good people. So it's like, just stop being a hater, man. And, but you're gonna have them. You're gonna have them. You're obviously doing something right if you have them. Um, a big thing for me is um, some people are, are nowhere to be found when the work's hard, right? So mm -hmm. you're putting all the work and then as soon as you start showing a little bit of growth and a little bit of confidence and people are starting to wonder what you're up to, everybody comes out of the woodworks and has suggestions and thinks that they're better or thinks that they know something and mm -hmm. they wanna give you tips on how to run your business and they've never ran one before. So it's like, that's gonna happen, you know what I mean? Give them what they want, accept their suggestions, and then move on with your life. You know what I mean? So just have the confidence and the value that you bring. Be open-minded to everybody. I'm not saying that. But also just know yourself, know your authenticity, and just have confidence. Yeah, to build off of confidence is three letters that uh, Caleb <laughs> is a big fan of saying, and that's, uh, that's BDE. And for those of you that don't know, um, I'm going to let you do the definition and let everybody know because you yeah, know um, yeah, it's it's big dick energy, okay. Mm -hmm. And for lack of better words, um, you know, I was watching Last Chance You. Some of you guys that watched that show in the new season, and the quarterback coach was like, he goes, "Do you guys know what BDE is?" He's like, "It's big dick energy." Like, and and this is this is real life stuff. It's you walk onto the field and you're the baddest dude on the planet. And that's mm -hmm. how it should be in every aspect of life. Whether you walk onto the field, whether you walk into a business meeting, whether you walk into your job you got to believe that you're the best person for that job or you shouldn't have that job. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm, when I'm teaching kids some things about football and stuff, I'm like, especially receiver or, um, you know, just football in general. I think you have to have that unwavering confidence thinking that you're the baddest dude on the planet. Like I love going against DBs that you can burn them on a 60 yard touchdown. And they're like, yeah, I'm still the best ever. Like you still can't, you know, you won't route me. And they're just, their confidence is just yeah. unwavering. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to go against that guy every single play because you're never breaking them down. It's like Conor McGregor, the dude, he can lose a fight and still come out and talk all of his shit and, and be like, I'm the baddest dude on the planet, which you should absolutely believe in. Like, if you don't believe in that, if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? Totally. If you don't believe in your product, who else is going to buy it? So the confidence, the BDE, I think is a real thing. You got to walk around and there's a, there's a thin line between arrogance and confidence, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to be arrogant. You don't need to be a dick, but you need to believe that you're the baddest on the planet when it's time to roll. Yeah, totally. And it's something that you can, um, you can really lean into, especially when you're young and you have zero experience. And I'm talking about in work, I'm talking about in sports and anything. <laughs> Fake it until um, you make it, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. real thing. And yeah. it's like, um, it's a certain level of being naive that you have to have, you know what I mean? Um, because it's one of those things where uh, my dad taught me this. It's why I have this tattoo here. I can't stand this tattoo, but I love <laughs> what it stands for because my, my dad always told me when I walked up to a play when I was playing baseball, he told me this when I was nine years old. You walk up to play like you're the shadow of death and you're the baddest motherfucker on the field. Yeah. Doesn't absolutely. matter who you're hitting against, doesn't matter who you're playing against, doesn't matter what situation you're in. You are the baddest motherfucker in the valley of the shadow of death. And that's what he used to tell me, so that's what I have tattooed in my arm. Yeah. And it's this it's this like naivete, even if you don't have experience, it's like I will take myself against anybody in the like on the entire planet in any situation. Yeah. I will take myself against Elon Musk. Yeah. I will take myself against Bill Gates. Bet on yourself. I, I will take myself against Will Smith, anybody. I will take myself against Conor McGregor and I might lose. I might yeah. lose, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I will take myself because well, all of those people will know that I was there. Yeah. And I will learn and I will get back up and I will take myself again and again and again because there has to be that level of betting on yourself when nobody else does that's going to build confidence and it's going to show you who you are and your authenticity is going to come out externally but you're gonna know internally and that's what's really important yeah it's pretty much that line of like like they're gonna feel me yeah you know mm -hmm. i mean like in a football game like we might lose whatever the kid but you're gonna feel me you're gonna feel my presence you're gonna know who number three was you know what i mean and that's kind of the whole deal of um that's the attitude i i kind of had and i told the, the receivers that i that i work with like i'm like there's no one on this planet that can guard me obviously there is okay you know what i mean I'm, I'm realistic but that's what you have to have when you go to the line of scrimmage every single play that no one can guard you yeah you know i mean because if you think this guy can guard you he's gonna guard you it's your mind your mind mm -hmm. can your mind is so, so powerful with the, the talking positivity, putting good energy into the world, believing in yourself through your mind first. And yeah, they're gonna feel you. They're gonna feel that presence. I mean, confidence, you can feel it. You can't fake mm -hmm. energy. Like, yeah. you know, it's a weird thing that I feel like every time I'm out places, like I get weird looks, I, even at the gym, I get like, I get like, and I get like all like self-conscious, like why are these people staring at me, you know what I mean? And um, my dad told me one time, like, dude, it's the way you carry yourself. You're very confident and people see that, they feel that. So I stopped taking it so personal where it's like, you know, people get jealous. There's haters. They envy it. They want to be that confident, right? Mm -hmm. They have insecurities themselves. But I've also told people that have said stuff like, 
you know, they're they're giving me compliments. I'm like, dude, you're you look great. Like you you're you're perfect, bro. You look awesome, great routes, you know, whatever the case is. And so you gotta be able to give that love back and show support. Totally. And um another thing that I think builds uh a ridiculous amount of uh confidence, at least for me, but I I mean I would be bullish to say it does for everybody, is one is doing a lot of shit. Trying <laughs> yeah. a bunch of shit, but failing a yes. lot. Yes. Failing is one of those things where you can look at it either way and failing can totally ruin your confidence. Absolutely, because it's, I mean, you're failing. If you think about it in theory, it's like, well, you're not doing a good job. But if you look at it in of the idea of like, it's presenting so many more opportunities to learn and build off of and make better decisions and get more data and all of those things, failing, and I have failed a lot. I failed plenty of businesses. I failed plenty of opportunities. I didn't finish school. Like all of these things that I technically like, I didn't finish or I quit or I failed. Yeah. But I, I will take that in another form of like, that has built so much confidence because yeah. I've learned so much. I know what does work. I know so many things that don't work physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, all of those things to where if I could give one tip, it would be like, if you have a, an idea of trying anything, try it. And honestly, one of the worst things you could do, yeah, it would be awesome to try one thing one time and be really great at it, but you're not gonna learn anything. It might be a fluke and you're, you're never gonna know. And ultimately you're not gonna be really confident in it. Absolutely. I mean, failure equals success. I don't even know the definition of failure is different for everybody. I mean, what, to, what do you, what does failing even mean? Like, yeah, you know I mean, mm -hmm. um, not finishing whatever the case is, but I think failure breeds growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, without you, that's how you grow. I mean, that's how you learn certain skills. I remember, you know, my first day of fall camp as a freshman in college, um, I didn't get off the line of scrimmage in one-on-ones. I literally didn't run a route in one-on-one. -on -one. It was embarrassing. I failed in front of everybody. You know what I mean? Okay, but that made me realize, okay, you have something to work on, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then work on it, work on it, work on it, and every day you get better, every day you get better. So, you know, you can't hang your head when stuff doesn't go well or you think that you failed. You know, quote unquote, just grow. There's obviously something to work on, that's great. I mean, you're never, we're, we can always get be better at something. You know, you're never, you're never the, the what, the expert at anything, right? Yeah. The game's always evolving, the world's always evolving. Whatever field you're in is continuously evolving technology is coming out whatever the case is you can always get better you can always learn more you can always grow so failure breeds growth i'm a huge believer in that yeah and it's uh you should always bet on yourself as much as any anything but also it's one of those things of uh and bet on yourself of like yeah i'm i may or may not be the smartest person in the room but then you have to walk into these rooms and once you realize you are the smartest person in the room then it's on you to get into a, a room where you are not no longer the smartest person in the room yeah and Building off of that, that failure and him not getting off, off the line and me failing multiple, multiple biz businesses comes relentlessness and resiliency. Yes. Because there, there has to be a certain mindset of like, it's gonna work out. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like the uncommons for us, we, we've already built this company and we've already, we've already <laughs> like sold millions of dollars worth of stuff, we've already impacted millions of people and we've already exited and we're living a great life. The world just has to catch up. Yeah. You know, because we've put in so much work already but we've already failed and we've already tried a lot of things, but we also know that we are willing to keep trying and failing and failing and failing and then boom, it's gonna hit. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to, you know, San Juan Hills High School about um, adversity and things like that. And um, it's funny how the world and whatever you believe in, God, the, the football gods, whatever God you believe in, um, how he tests you to see how bad you really want something. You know, I mean, I kept getting injured. I kept getting this, a new, uh, a new adversity would hit. You know, I'm a walk on, whatever the case is, just adversity after adversity, then I'm feeling great. Then coronavirus hits, no pro day. It's like, it keeps testing you in life of how bad you want something and our thing, what are you willing to struggle for? Mm -hmm. it's, you're gonna struggle at some point. I mean, it's never gonna be rainbows and unicorns and all the great shit in life, right? It's gonna be dark times. There's gonna be dark, dark, dark times. You know what I mean? And how are you gonna get out of that? How are you, are you willing to struggle for it? I mean, he's really gonna test you. Like, are you just gonna fold and quit right now? Or are you gonna push back? Are you gonna come back stronger? Are you gonna overcome this adversity? Um, you know, so I think failure and adversity breeds, I mean, anybody can be great when, you know, everything's going right, right? When your back's against the wall and it's sink or swim, are you gonna swim? Are you gonna be with the sharks? Are you gonna, are you gonna be the guy when everybody's looking to you on third down and the game's on the line? Are you gonna make the play? Are you gonna take the game winning shot? Are you gonna pass it to somebody else? Mm -hmm. It's like, how great do you wanna be? What are you willing to struggle for? Yeah, and uh, I love that you mentioned that because that, what are you willing to struggle for is actually from Mark Manson, who is my favorite author. Um, but so he asked that question that way, but I've also heard him ask it, it's the same exact question. I'll ask you. Okay. What flavor of shit sandwich are you willing to yep. eat every single day? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like what it's the same exact concept. What do you what shit are you willing to take every single day to get the end result? Yeah. So I'm gonna end 
this podcast with, I have the question of the day. Um, what book do you think that you've read that has taught you, um, I would say, to, to be able to handle adversity more than any of them? Um, so shout out to McKenna Kogor. She gave me the coffee bean book, um, what, like two days ago. And it's ob- you can read it in like literally 10 minutes. Mm, love that. Um, it's like, it almost looks like a little kid book. You know what I mean? And it's a very, very simple, um, what is it, theme of the book. It's, it's so this kid and it's it's funny he's like he's a football player and he's in high school and he's like i'm so stressed out i have all these tests i'm failing some classes um you know i have so much pressure for the game on friday there's scouts coming blah blah like all this stuff right it seems like the, the sky's falling and his teacher goes i want you to go home and boil a pot of water and i want you to put a carrot in there i want you to put an egg in there and i want you to put a coffee bean in there right so the the moral of the story is sorry if you wanted to read it i'm gonna ruin it for you um but anyway you put a carrot in, it weakens with the water, right? And he, he relates that to you're letting your environment make you weak. You're letting your environment dictate how you feel, right? You're weakening. Then the, the, the egg, when you put an egg in boiling water, it's a hard boiled egg, right? And he's like, then there's certain people that their environment makes them hard. It makes them heartless. It makes them just like brush everything off, right? With no emotion, like you're just a hard exterior, right? Um, which is no way to live either. And then there's the coffee bean, who rolls with the environment, but it just, it doesn't let anything take it over. It doesn't let anything, it just changes with its environment in a good way, right? Like it doesn't let it take it over in a bad or good way. It just rolls with it and doesn't let it dictate how it's gonna live its life. And that's kind of where, you know, the kid started going through adversity all this time and he just kept reminding himself he had a coffee bean in his pocket and that was kind of his little thing that, be the coffee bean, right? Um, and that's stuff that, that I still battle with through a day-to-day basis. Sometimes I get, I get super pissed and I used to have such a bad temper and what's this guy looking at, you know, and get all personal. And I still, I still battle that stuff every single day. And it's like, I'm trying to let go. I'm trying to be, not take things personal and be the coffee bean and just not let my environment dictate it. And, um, so that's kind of where the book, I think that kind of just opened up to me. So I love that. I'm going to have to read it, even though you just spoiled the entire story. Yeah, it's a good sorry. read. It's like, I mean, it's like 10 minutes. So there was like a little spark notes for you. <laughs> spark notes. Good throwback. Look at you. All right. So you thank you. For, thank you for listening. You know, cliff notes. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate you guys. And um, go to theuncommons.co and um, check out the send it method, which is our version, our course, our masterclass of how you can send simple DMs and emails to literally anybody on the planet and possibly land a ridiculous opportunity that could absolutely change your life um, because we've all done it multiple times. Yes, still to this day. I mean, you literally did it, what, like three days ago and you're talking to a huge, huge, huge CEO um, champion in a certain sport um, and hopefully we have some news for you guys soon. But um, yeah, it literally happened three days ago from a cold DM. So. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time.